Welcome back to the beautiful bathroom. This week we have a few new cool things to check out. So first of all, there's the Sony ZV-E1, which is an interesting camera because it's like a consumer targeted content creator camera, but it has some serious power in there. It's like they took the ZV-E10 and just turbocharged the hell out of it. it. Started off by taking it to this event called Nitro RX, where I got to test out the low light and the slow motion capabilities out of it. Super cool race to watch. And one of the sponsors of Nitro RX is Insta360. And you know what else is sponsored by Insta360? This video, thank you, Insta360. 360 for sponsoring us today. I'm basically Travis Pastrana. I think that's how it works, right? And right now we're actually using a brand new thing that Insta360 is announcing today called the Insta360 Flow. So it is a gimbal for the phone. And at first I was thinking, well, there's so many phone gimbals out there. Like how is this one gonna be special? And it took me about 10 seconds for me to go, oh, okay, I like this, right? So right now I have it on a, a tripod. I dropped that on purpose. Quarter 20 down here so I could put it on a tripod, but check it out, that extends out. So a better grip surface area right there. And also folds out into tripod feet built in, which is actually a pretty big deal because you don't have to carry around this extra tripod feet in your pocket because you always need to do it. You know, when you don't have the tripod feet, these things are still freaking awkward. It's like, where do you put it down? Do you have to hold this for eternity? I don't know. So this is just like a little magnetic bracket right here. So all you gotta do to set it up and turn everything on is to magnetically attach it and then unfold it and it turns on and check it out. A notification will pop up. Look at that, Insta360 app. So you just have to tap it. And now I'm already in the app ready to go. Also, anyways, you might be wondering why am I just hanging out in the bathroom? I mean, it used to be a pile of mold and a leaking tub. We actually couldn't even use this for over a year and a half of us living here. The coolest thing about this whole shower is this right here. So this is a thermostatic valve. All you gotta do is push the button to turn it on and it automatically regulates the temperature. And even if I come over here and flush the toilet, you know how you're in the shower and all of a sudden it gets cold or hot or whatever. This, you'll, you'll feel it for a split second and then it goes back to normal. And somehow it does this without any electricity. I don't have to dial anything in, it just button press works. That's kind of the point of these content creator tools like filming on an iPhone. That's also kind of what the Sony ZV lineup is for. So we have Carrie and Dylan here and they operate the camera for me a lot, but usually I dial in the settings. We just hold it and point yeah, it. And point. Basically, yeah. yeah. So this camera just went through a full factory reset. You guys are taking over the review from here. Off to on, let's do that. I want English. Sounds like a good idea. Certain features of this camera, blah, 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 blah. No one ever reads stuff. these things, they just go, okay. Connect your smartphone via Bluetooth and set up the camera's initial settings. Hey, that's actually showing my camera, the A7S III, which I'm recording on right now. Okay. If I did, could I like hijack your camera? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> when shooting from a tripod, instead of shooting while holding the device, setting auto power off temp to high to extend the recording time, would you like to set? Yeah, because we want to record longer, right? Okay. So far, things have not exploded. Yeah. Oh, look. Hello. It, it's on a setting now. It's a backlight portrait. That's actually kind of interesting. It recognized that I was backlit, so mm -hmm. it just decided to expose for me and blow out the background. Yeah. Okay. At this point, I'm going to hop into this menu real quick and just change two settings real quick just so that this can match this camera in my image format. So I want to shoot 4K. I'm going to use the HS, basically the compressed format right here and change over to 24 frames per second. But that's it. I want to do so much more, but I'm just going to leave it at just that. Oh, it changed to macro for a second. Yeah. So macro is basically extreme close up. Portrait, backlight portrait. That's interesting. How infant? It's an infant. <laughs> for a second, I thought you were an infant and you're a baby. The image is it's like clear. I like easy. So yeah, I think we just need to do a battery swap now. And Dylan, are you ready to film your first episode on your new channel to become the next big influencer? More than ready. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Dylan. Got cool content and all that. And one of those things that I've actually done for the last few years is a uh, throw a boomerang. I'm actually a world champion, you know. I went on Mount Everest and did it. All this cool stuff that you can't even imagine. I'm going to show you how to throw like a master. Ouch. <laughs> Whoa, it actually kind of it turned actually around. Kind of, came of course, back. it worked. No joke, I'm actually pretty impressed that it actually kind of started to spin around. That's the first time he's actually ever thrown it. <laughs> that actually almost like kind of came around. Yeah, I was like, kind of like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, you got a little zoom rocker right here. So, notice that it zooms a little bit. It, it's smoother on this kit lens. The zoom is kind of sticky. Okay, so right now this lens goes from 28 to 60 and you're maxed out there, but you can actually use the clear image zoom yep. and now you can get in an extra 1.5 digital zoom. So basically all it's doing is cropping into the image. But what's really nice about Sony's clear image zoom, there's a 12 megapixel sensor in there, which is above 4K. So even when you crop into that sensor a little bit, you still have enough pixels to make a, a 4K image. And if you were in full HD, then you could do a 2X zoom and still maintain that resolution. I think we need some 
epic slow motion. S and Q stands for slow and quick. So let's go ahead and switch that over. So we're set to 4K60. It's on the auto mode. Okay, go ahead and try playing it back. So this is a file that I can go back and slow mo down and post. Let me go into the menu and just adjust a few things here. So now that we're in S and Q, I could set my record frame rate, which we're doing 24 right here. So this should actually show you the slow motion right off the camera. One of the things that's really impressive about this A7S III is the slow mo capability. So 4K 120 and 1080p at 240. It's actually going to carry over to here. Now, right now, it's limited to 4K 60 and 1080p 120. But in a few months, they're going to update the firmware. Uh, oh, sh whoa. What? Where'd it go? Oh, I don't damn even see it. it. Oh, I don't think it went all the way over there. It went in the water. It did? Yeah, it's just like floating out there. Oh, dang. Wait, that went super far. We can't let plastic go into the ocean, Dylan. Wasn't thinking of going in the ocean on a cold day. Whoever loses, ready? Rochambeau. You got this, Dylan. <laughs> it's in a current. I don't know if it's gonna be able to get it. If it's in a current, maybe we'll catch it down over there. I wish I had a gimbal right now. It's right there, right? Can I just snag it right here? Ha! Huh. You don't, you don't have to go back in the water. Man, we lost it all the way over there. Holy crap. So kids, that's how you save the ocean. All the dolphins will love you. Aquaman's being a lazy ass, did his job. I'm so used to the shutter button also recording but when I pressed it on this camera, it didn't record. So that is one of the things that I definitely do early on. See that record with shutter? So oh. go ahead and change that to on. All right, let's see if I can throw this thing without getting it in the ocean. Whoa, sh where's it going? Dang! Oh, oh my gosh, no. no! No, no, it's cool. But really the main reason why we wanted this back is so that we could record uh, HD 120. What we need to do is just lower this to a HD, HD setting. What's the difference between HD and IHD? This one's going to be more dense of a file. It's a little bit more pro. If you were shooting in log, I would say maybe this would be worth it. But for now, we can just go in here. Pretty much ready to record at 120. All right, so now looking back at some of the footage we just shot with the ZV-E1 in auto settings, it was pretty interesting because you could tell it's doing a little bit more than the typical auto exposure and white balance and stuff like that. It's detecting things like Dylan being an infant. I thought the colors looked good, but the stabilization I thought was like a little meh. The kit lens we were using doesn't have any sort of image stabilization. And that is one thing I would like to see out of Sony is more image stabilized lenses. But there is a new setting in the stabilization, dynamic active image stabilization, which is supposed to be 30% more stable than the standard active. But there's definitely a pretty heavy prop in to the image as well. But I think in general, if you're fairly stable and not running around chasing boomerangs, I think the footage would have come out really good. Going to a mirrorless camera from something like a phone, you're just gonna have way more lens options and just way better low light performance, especially because the ZV-E1 seems to have a dual native ISO right up there at 12,800, just like the A7S III. So you see the image get grainier and grainier and then all of a sudden it gets clean at 12,800. But how is this camera for someone that's coming from more of the pro side? It actually could be interesting because it it seems like basically a budget FX3. I originally switched over to Sony because of that sensor in the A7S3, and they basically took that sensor, put in the FX3. Sony didn't say this was the same sensor, but it seems very, very similar. And if you want that manual control, you can still get it out of here with the 10 bit codex, and you pair that with the S Log 3 for color grading. The biggest drawback seems to be that it doesn't have a fan. So if you're going to do extended recording, it has a chance of overheating. There's also this new interesting feature called framing stabilization, it crops into the sensor and kind of can track with you. But of course, there's going to be limitations if you hit the edge of the sensor. So if you're going to be doing that, I think you're going to have much better luck using something like our sponsor's gimbal. All right, so now let's go ahead and switch over to the Insta360 Flow. And this has Deep Track 3.0. So even though this is Insta360's first phone gimbal, if you think about it, they've been doing stabilization in their 360 cameras for a long time. And even the tracking, like if you ever use their 360 cameras and track a subject, it, it follows them pretty good. So basically I could find a subject and hit that and you can see the green square. And everything's on auto right now, but of course I could manually override some of the settings. Built-in looks too. So let's see, sports, ooh, surfing. Oh, this, these actually look kind of decent. I can adjust the strength of it. I like the Insta360 app. It has a lot of step-by-steps and really walks you through how to get certain shots if you're not creative like I am. It looks like there's also some gesture controls that we can activate. So extend your palm and keep it within four meters to start or stop shooting. Oh, hey, there you go. And it's flashing so you could see that it's recording. Now it's recording. And there's also this thing called Shot Genie Library. So if I hit that, I can say, I'm at a park. All right, so now it suggests a spin around and smile like that. Yay, yeah. 
Yeah. This just gives you suggestions on types of shots to get so that you could edit it together later. Of course, this thing extends out and you could tilt it out like that. We've been testing it out and taking it around town. And so far the app has been very stable and solid. So down here we have our basic controls and joystick. And this wheel right here is for zoom. So I can zoom in. Of course we could go horizontal or portrait. And when you're done, you just fold it up and then pop off your phone stash it away. And one last thing I will mention that I like about this is that this clamp on here, it doesn't seem to push down on the buttons, at least on the cases that I've tried it on, but it kind of arches like that because it is pretty annoying when you try to put your phone in the gimbal and like all the buttons are being pressed down and all that. So yeah. Thanks so much Insta360 for sponsoring this episode and links down there for the Insta360 float down below. This is an awesome way to get escorted onto set, Sammy. I called them and I was like, where are you guys? I can't find you guys. And they're just like, oh, we'll find you. And then this thing just shows up. All right, so I'm just following this drone. There you guys are. Are you guys getting shots right now? Yeah, we're working yeah. right now. There's gonna be like a whole military. It's for like a video game commercial. Your vest makes you look like you're about to go into combat too. I am. What's up, Josh? What's going on? Slash Ewalt FPV. Yes, sir. I'm flying. Sammy's operating camera. Is that the new camera? Uh, maybe. What kind of uh, image quality are you getting out of? Okay, so basically this is like an A7S III. Okay. Or an FX3 or FX6 even, because they all kind of are like the same sensor-ish, but consumerized a little bit. So it's a full frame? Full frame, yeah. yeah. It's a content creator camera, but I mean, the hardware in there is pretty legit. Does it have it's IBIS? IBIS, yeah. That's the, that, yeah, you don't want IBIS. That's no. the thing, yeah. How's the autofocus though? We need to get the FX6. We need FX6, the FX6. Because the, <laughs> the FX6 doesn't have IBIS, so you like that for the drone stuff. Yeah. How much is this camera? 22 to 2400. So we can destroy it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, we crash, we don't feel that bad. So this thing is called framing stabilizer. Move around. It's gonna... Wait, it's not moving the camera. The camera's on a tripod. So what's it doing, like moving the sensor? That would be interesting, but no. It basically does a digital crop. Yeah, like and then crop, it just right. Yeah, it's like the uh, image stabilization, except yeah. for it follows you, but let's see, I think it's, is it still following you? It is still following you. It's lost me. Oh, yeah. that? I'm back at it. Can you find me down here? <laughs> I don't think you can. Oh, 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 and you're at the edge of the sensor. No, I'm but back. Does it, does it come back? Oh, it did and come back. back. How's the movement? Like, does it actually feel like a nice smooth motion? It, or it does. does it it actually, it, it feels pretty smooth, actually. See? Now I have it on Josh. Now it should follow you until you go out of frame. That's kind of tricky because it's hard to tell when you're about to hit the edge of frame, huh? Let's see if it comes back. Oh, oh it still did grab you. There you go. Hey, hey you're back. It back on shot. That's cool. There is one feature that the ZV cameras have that I think is kind of useful. So this is product showcase mode. Usually it's on like face detect. So it'll stay on your face and you'll be like, hey, look at this thing, but then it won't focus to the thing. So here it should focus on the thing. Yeah, so this is back. product showcase mode, which oh, is kind of useful. Okay, so then it focuses on back. Really yeah. yeah, like look at this thing. Look at this thing. Don't right focus here. on my face, focus, yeah, on, this, focus on this thing. thing. You built this? I did. Look at this, it's like a Cinewhoop with like the thinnest pop guards. You have anything else you'd like to product showcase? Nope. Look at this one. <laughs> There's actually a dog mode. Does it focus on this product if you have two products? There's also a Cinevlog mode. It, it has the bars. It'd be cool if it was like actual widescreen, but it literally just better boxes it so yeah. bars just on the top and bottom there's different looks looks like so clean chic fresh mono, mono. i mean it's kind of interesting to have these different looks in here yeah my dogs are going to be very jealous and upset <laughs> back in my mode s log three all right so we're on a lunch break so we have an empty set for a second but check out this spot here This is so cool. I'm loving this. This is like my version of Disneyland. Oh crap. I left my SD card in the reader, but this is where it would go. Up top is the mic input and USB-C. I love Sony's USB-C ports because they could do a bunch of stuff from charging to data transfer. You can just plug it in and it just shows up as a, a drive on the computer. You can set it up so that it shows up like a webcam and all that stuff. And then on the bottom here is a headphone jack and micro HDMI. So not the full size HDMI that I would have liked to see. But again, this is like a, a consumer targeted camera. And this display back here is a reasonably good bright screen, but it does seem slightly slightly less sharp than the screen on the A7S III. We go down to the bottom and we see the same type of battery as we would in the A7 IV, A7S III, FX3, FX30, all that. So I definitely love that. I love the consistency. On the bottom is a single quarter 20, of course, for tripods, all that good stuff. Full frame sensor. Don't mind all the scuff marks on this lens. This is the one that I crashed on an FPV drone a long time ago. Sony, if you're looking at this and you're like, did you crash our camera? No, my, my old A7S III, or actually, no, the, this camera I'm recording on right 
right now. Switches, record button. This is a defocus button, which is kind of interesting. So if you're not on manual exposure, controlling all that stuff, then you can hop back between clear and defocus. So basically it just opens up your aperture or closes it down. The hot shoe up here is one of those smart, fancy MI shoes. So you could attach those XLR adapters. Button layout's pretty familiar with most other Sonys, but a little bit more minimalistic. But I would say one of the biggest, most obvious things with this camera is just how lightweight it is. 1.0 six pounds and check this lens out this is the 11 mil f 1.8 now this is an aps-c lens right here so it's not really designed for full frame cameras but i can still attach it and look at that weight 1.45 pounds for this setup since this is an aps-c lens on a full frame camera of course i'm going to see some vignetting on the edges but what i could do is do that digital zoom to just crop in a bit and now i have a ultra wide angle lens i'm still getting a full 4k resolution we do still have gyro information when we're shooting unstabilized which is awesome so how are we looking here right now we are shooting completely unstabilized and i'm going to use catalyst brows to stabilize it in post here we are it's always so weird seeing yourself in third person view like this technical spot here because obviously lots of trees to avoid but then i have to make sure i stay nice and low to the ground but also not get too high so here's a little peek at this document they sent me so in this 4k 60 setting we're getting about 30 minutes opposed to the 90 minutes from the pro models and then if we drop into hd then we can get about 90 it seems to be about right i mean the first thing i did when i got the camera was i put it in the highest quality 4k 30 hit record put it on the desk and it lasted about 32 minutes before i overheated so that definitely does make it a little bit tricky for pro use you know you can't go i'm gonna go and film your wedding but can you keep that wedding to a, a 30 minute window please but i also try to get in the 4k 60 in the h265 so the compressed format so that went about 54 minutes before it overheated also in 4k 24 at 100 megabits per second i got about two hours and 14 minutes before the battery died so that's actually great in room temperature this is the setting that i'm using a lot i do think that they need to start including 4k 30 in the h265 modes because i feel like that's what i would recommend to a majority of people and then of course i threw it in the incubator to test it at the maximum recommended operating temperature and it overheated in 39 minutes in this 4k 24 modes and then i gave it about a 10 minute break and then started it back up to see how long that would last and in about 11 minutes in it overheated but again this is tested more in the extreme end of things so if you're more the type to vlog bay here film 10 minutes here 20 minutes there you're probably gonna be fine now most of this video i've been recording with external microphones like this but the zve one's internal microphone is kind of interesting first of all you have that fluffy wind cover like the zve 10 which is very useful in windy conditions you could actually change the direction that it's recording so right now this microphone is recording in all directions so should be picking up my voice behind the camera and also dylan's voice what's up dude I'm just hanging out. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch it forward. So now how does my voice sound back here? And then we go over to Dylan. And how does it sound here? Yeah. So you have some control with the internal microphone, which is pretty interesting. We're back to all directions. I do think that audio would have sounded better if I lowered the audio recording levels because I tend to be uh, on the louder side of talker. I'm basically just screaming at the top of my lungs right now. But I do think that for a camera like this, Sony should really work on is the auto audio level adjustment so that you don't have to go in and manage manually slide the levels around depending on how loud it is here i just wanted to see how the rolling shutter looked and it seems pretty good i mean the a7s3 is very quick at reading out the sensor and this seems to be right along the same lines and also notice that the zv1 seems to be a bit bluer than the a7s3 it is possible that it was a difference in lenses that caused that but at least in these shots here i'm just seeing more blue opposed to that slightly more magenta and these are both shooting in the same s log 3 settings so i dig it and then of course still being able to capture a clean image at iso 12,800 is significant that's crazy good low light even pushing it up to 25,600 here but it does also open up some doors on how clean of an image you could get even with a slow lens and here they're both on a 24 mil but the zve one is on that super stabilized mode here you can see it's way more cropped in and it definitely does help with the stabilization i wouldn't say gopro level stabilization but i could definitely see this being useful if you have a lens wide enough another thing to keep in mind is that by default the soft skin effect is on so as soon as i realized it was on there i just went ahead and turned it off and also there's kind of the swipe in beginner friendly menu here but i actually love that they incorporated this video menu here and then the rest of the menu feels very familiar to the other sony cameras the focus breathing comp option which is a feature i do like to have on a lot of the times but for whatever reason on my camera at least it was grayed out and it said invalid with this lens even though those lenses work with my other cameras that do have that 
that feature but i asked sony about this and they did say that it is in this camera so uh maybe this is just a firmware thing not sure and as of right now i still don't know what official pricing is from what i know it's going to be about 22 to 24 hundred dollars which does seem a bit high from a zv camera because what the zv e10 is like 700 800 bucks it would have been nice if they could have gotten us something that's like 15 1600 bucks but i mean the hardware that's in here you know the fx3 is like four thousand dollars almost so this is almost half the price not quite there but i mean from this price point you're very close to twenty five hundred dollars which is the price of the a7 IV, which has really high resolution photos or you could go down to two thousand dollars and get the panasonic s5 II. a lot of pro features in there including a fan so it does not overheat but what this camera has that the other two don't have are a lot of the smart features like the super stabilization mode and product showcase is a feature that I would love to have and also when that new firmware hits in June I believe it's going to give us that 4k 120 full HD and 240 with no crop in either of those so that's kind of like best in class like my Sony a7 IV it crops in even if I just want 4k 60. so if these smart features and super slow-mo is really appealing to you and the overheating thing doesn't freak you out too much and you could live with that micro HDMI and you could live with the fact that it's like a consumer camera it may be a pretty decent option for you even at this price point because they really didn't hold back much. And even with the last video, I was using the ZBE one to record the studio stuff in s 3 and everything seemed to have worked just as expected. No complaints here, but that's pretty much everything I was able to test out before I had to send the camera back. So let's read some comments from uh, the last video. No regret says potato jet reviewed a Fuji camera. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I try a new camera manufacturer, you know, you have to kind of like relearn the menu system. Like at this point I could pick up any Sony or Canon or Panasonic sonic and feel very comfortable with it very fast i'm comfortable with it but yeah picking up the fuji film i was just like what ian says damn the colors and dynamic range fuji never disappoints on this stuff yeah i was definitely a, a fan of the filmic look actually my buddy eric de haven had a comment on that he says you know why the fuji looks better shooting skies and sunset it's the x trans sensor it's not a bayer pattern it uses a different design that better distributes the green photo sites to give better highlight roll off yes i am a nerd <laughs> focus could be improved though yeah sometimes it would focus on the wrong face and actually one thing that is cool about the zve one the sony camera aside from having great sony autofocus like all their new cameras have now is that it could actually change the depth of field in auto mode if there's multiple faces in the frame so if it's just one person it'll be like a very blurry background but it detects a second character walking in then it'll extend out that focus range based on that if you are filming in auto mode fuji colors remain superior just wish their ibis and autofocus was better but they're great cameras i did like the fuji look but yeah the, the ibis image stabilization panasonic does that best and autofocus sony does that best but when it comes to that filmic aesthetic fuji was very cool i did love the look of it do you prefer the o3 camera over an action cam on your fpv drones I, I would prefer an action camera up top my biggest complaint about the o3 air unit is that it doesn't have a 24 frame per second option or a 48 or but it does have 120 but only if you're using the old v2 goggles so with the new goggles too, it can only go up to 100, but here I can 4K 120, which is divisible by 24. Is, is that the right word? Divisible? Yeah, I think so. I'm a math guy, but that pretty much wraps it up. Feel free to click on stuff if you want to. You don't have to. I'm not trying to peer pressure you into anything and do things that you live your life. That is all. Bye.